Hello, Samadan here. Now, I'm going to talk about the Wowhead blog at the second half of this video, but first I want to talk about what I've been going on with my gold making, and the first thing you can see here is I'm making the most use of my two accounts, and it kind of ties in with what we're going to talk about on the Wow Economy blog with multiple accounts and diversifying and things like that. But if you've been following my series of what I've been doing and you notice that I started a second account a few months ago and what I was waiting for was another discounted version of the character transfers so I could split my characters as you can see here across two different accounts. Now there's a number of different reasons I've done that. First and foremost it's down to sort of time and convenience. As I say you know time is money friend but this is more about me being able to do things whilst the other account is doing things like opening up the mail, listing auctions, and crafting a mass amount of things. And whilst that's going on in one screen, I can flip over to the other one and do the similar things on the other accounts with the other characters. It's all in the with the aim to get my routine of gold making, the opening up auctions, relisting them, reposting them, down to a minimum really, because me, like many other people, my time is limited. I don't have a huge amount of time to play and I don't want to really be inefficient if I can help it. So what I've done is there was the, the offer of eight character transfers for the price of six as part of a bundle. You can see here I've got four character transfers left. So what I did was I took Bridget and Irfan from my main account over here and I've moved them over to the second account. But this is the way I thought about splitting it up so that each of these characters deals with their own professions and they list their own auctions on. I could have split it differently and I could have had maybe a bank alt on one side and all the crafters on another. That's another way of configuring it. But there was another thing I wanted to do and that is things like the daily quests, not the daily quests, the, uh, the weekly quests for anima, like the, the world bosses. I figured that if I have my characters split across these two accounts, that they can, that two characters can do the quests at the same time. So when the Wednesday rotation came round, I basically hopped on my sort of sandstone drake on one character, grouped up with the other one, and they both went off, did the world boss quest for the extra anima, and then that was it. It was really quick and really convenient. So that was the reason why I split my characters across here. You can see I actually had to rename them um, from their original names, which is a slightly unfortunate because I like those names, but that doesn't matter too much. It was all well worth it. Another thing you'll notice is there's no Joykening. Now he last went on holiday over to do Drain, or I have a video uh, about that. Now that didn't quite work out as I planned because what I intended to do was go across, buy a load of cheap materials, then come back and then use them as those materials to make legendaries and make profit on selling those legendaries. Now as it turned out I was too slow in making legendaries. I didn't expand my market in that front and I held on to the materials. And the upshot of that is that the prices on my server slowly went down to below the price I bought them for originally on the other server. So in effect, it wasn't really worth it. So I've tried another experiment. I'm going to do it again. Joawakening has gone over to Kazakh. So what I did was transfer Joawakening from the main account over to the second account and went over to Kazakh with about 771,000 gold. Uh, I didn't, couldn't be bothered to wait for the full 1 million. Bought up a whole load of resources, and then I went to transfer back after 72 hours. Unfortunately, that's where I made another mistake, because because I transferred from one account over to the other account, instead of a 72-hour window for returning back over, it actually becomes a 30-day window. Okay, so to get round that, I made another character, a, a Dark Iron Dwarf here, Bracca, and passed all the, the materials that I bought over to Bracca. And then, then I transferred back over to Shadow Song with all the stuff to hopefully sell. And this time, I'm going to try and compress the window between buying and selling down to a minimum so that all the things that I bought, I can then try and sell as quickly as possible so that the markets are roughly representative. And I've got some figures. Let me just find my spreadsheet. And so this is the same as my holiday to drain or where I calculated all the things I took over, all the things I bought and took back and tried to calculate what kind of profits and spending money and everything included to see where my break even points were. So I did similar here over on Kazakh. Now, key differences here, um, I've gone with two tokens to go there and back because of the discounted price. Now that's, and that's not including the discount really, that's just using the main bundle price of, uh, I think it's six transfers for 60 pounds, which means basically two tokens, one for there and one for back. 
So I, I've kind of overestimated on that. If I include the, the two extra I got for the price of that, I could reduce this down. I'm taking a rough average of token price of 300. Um, but then with my wasted transfer, because I went over, I'll just kind of take this as uh, the same bundle price because that was kind of a one-off anyway. Now, I didn't take any materials with me, so nothing here is all completely blank. And this is a list of pretty much everything I bought. So it's a whole load of current materials mainly. A whole load of bits and pieces. I've got a few extra missives that I try out a few different things. Managed to pick up some Crusader orbs for an average of six, trying to see if I can sell those. I know that with something like that, if I don't sell them, I'll use them up on enchants. Volatile Fire is the same. They were, I had 200 for 24 gold, and I know they go for 90 gold on mine. Actually, that's 50. That should be more like 90 like that. But this is the cost of everything uh, that I bought, 707,000. I did actually buy a couple of legendaries as well, just the actual crafted legendaries, see if I could make some money on those. Those are a risky one though, because I know the price on those are plummeting. The timing of this is important, because this is not really a good time to do this. You know, we're at the end of an expansion, material prices, everyone's dumping the materials there, trying to sell what they can, and so markets as, as, as a whole are dropping quite rapidly. So... It's not really the best time to do that, but in terms of experimenting and working out if I can make a profit, this is still an opportunity to test the waters. It's not something I'd want to do regularly. I mean, simply because you've got to do the whole transfer over, you're kind of crashing your own markets by coming back, and it's not something I would use as a regular way to make gold. It's not something you could repeat regularly and still get the same kind of profits because your supply and demand on different servers is going to be vastly different and they'll all settle down to their own levels. Once the supply gets too high, then the prices will crash and your profit margins will change and then it's not worth doing. So this is this is by no means a get-rich-quick scheme or anything like that. It's just a, another method of making gold and a little experiment for myself. So in terms of value, I mean, I've spent 707000 According to these prices, which I've got in my home realm, this should... It, in theory be worth 1.9 million that's if they sell for that value they're not going to though these prices will crash down what i'll do is i'll log into bracket and you can see in terms of how much real gold he's got and how much listed auction value he's got and that is my true kind of value and that's not even then going to be representative to actually sell these things because given these numbers the including the cost of the flights over and everything and the spending money that i had and the material prices, if I sold them for this price, should give me a profit of about 628000 That's a optimistic figure, uh, shall we say. We'll see how it actually pans out over the course of the next month whilst I sell all the things that I've got. So, lots going on at the moment. And we'll go through my characters. What I'll do is I'll show you the kind of routine that I have now, which I find a lot quicker uh, in when I've got two accounts running like this. So what I'll end up doing is then logging into the top two, because usually those are the ones with the, the most amount of auctions and the most amount of mission tables to send off and things like that. And I'll alternate and flip back between character and character to try and minimise, see all this waiting time you've got for loading. Hopefully one is doing that whilst the other is doing something else more active, like I have to list the auctions on themselves. And I've set my graphic settings down to one for both of them now. I could optimize this further by turning off a lot of unused add-ons. Uh, now, here's another benefit you'll see. You'll notice that Samadan is here in the Isle of Caldanas because we've been running through the Sunwell Plateau raid here. Because Samadan could do with a lot of different things here. I'll jump in and show you. And Bridget could do with a lot of things here. So what I'd normally, what I tried as well here was both of them go through. And because what they need is they both have uh, recipes that they need. See, Bridget needs a whole of these designs for jewel crafting and engineering in terms of collecting. And Samadan has a load of patterns here necessary for this. So this is collecting old recipes, something I'd also like to do. This way, with both characters doing it at the same time, I can run through this dungeon and my chances are increase of at least getting something on one of the characters. So that's another bonus uh, to doing this. I won't actually run this at the moment, but... You can, you can see the benefits coming out. I mean, I, a lot, I do wish I'd done this sooner, but the downside, obviously, is having two accounts is you do have to pay for the token price for two accounts at the same time, which for me, where are we at token price? 302,000 at the moment. So that's 600,000 gold you need to be able to reliably make every month, which is no mean feat in itself. 
I've got to the stage after four plus years of gold making that I can comfortably make that on average over most months. Some months might be a bit less, but I know that on average it will be okay. I've got enough game time over on Samadan till September, and on my second account I've got enough game time for at least another month. So what I'll do over the course of this month is make sure that I can buy a token on this account and buy a token on this account, and then I know that I'm at least breaking even. My TSM graphs are obviously going to be all over the shop now that I've moved money between the two of them as well, but we'll get into that a bit later. I'll go through and do all the opening and closing stuff first. So I'll probably, let's go back to Dalaran first on both of those. Let them run through. So first character in, do something on this one, move on over, get them set up and start opening things. Open my expires on there. And on the second account, I can go on over, go to a different mailbox so I've got some space. And I'll start on the expires over there. Now that that one's done on this side, I can jump over to here and start listing these. I've got a few different things I could do with clearing out of my bags here. That makes the whole process of waiting around a, a lot, lot quicker. So 31, I can start listing these. Whilst the mail's opening over on the other side, I can see that ticking through. So then that lot's posted. I just can clear up a little bit of bag space there, get rid of that extra junk. And then start opening those expires. Once I jump over onto this one, clear the junk on there, and then we'll start listing these auctions. And then once that's going through, close this. I think everything's opened on that side. I've got less bag space on here, so I'm having to do this one more frequently at the moment. So I'll just quickly run through this one. I can see the other ones waiting to post there, but that's not too bad. This is the beauty of having everything all set up. I've got my operations. I'm fairly happy with how everything's set up, so I can fire and forget on most of these Having these professions all worked out over time. This one takes a little bit longer, so let's run through. I can see Bridget's already done on that side. I can look at what she's got, 12,000 gold on that front. Kind of standard stuff sticking through. I haven't done any major things over the last few weeks. Literally just relisting, restocking occasionally when I have the time. That kind of thing. Right, next batch on Samadan. Samadan usually has the most auctions to list, so... That's the other one. So we've got a few things left here. What have you sold? Amber Blaze. Failed Augment Runes always. Deadly Symbiote Rings. A couple of those at 5,000. That's nice. Let's just list the last of these. It took me a little while to get everything set up. And I'm using the master profile that's available over on my Patreon for both of these accounts. If I do make any changes, I have to remember which account I've done it on. And then copy that over to the other accounts so that TSM can recognize everything. And you have to obviously be a bit more careful when sending things over from one character to another. That you, you've spelt the name right and all that kind of thing. But it, it's, it's fairly easy just to uh, run through all of this. So you can see here, it's, it's really down to speed over anything else and being more efficient with my time. So once you're at a position where you can comfortably make enough gold to run two accounts, I can really see the, the benefits of it here. So, so far so good, those all listed. Then the other thing I'd be doing is obviously going back to my covenant and doing the mission tables because that's another nice little money earner that ticks through once that's all set up. It's all these different diversifications really. And then now that's, whilst that's loading, I can be listing on here. And then jump over back over onto Bridget. Uh, things I need to do here is go over to where the mission table is, drop down, open up all of those, completed. Lots of things here. Keep an eye on my anima for the moment. Should be okay. It's mainly Samadan that's uh, running low on anima at the moment. But the others are all doing well. So I've got mainly four characters at the moment that can do mission tables. So I'll usually do opening up everything first and then check for any things to open or experience to assign to followers. Grab all of these and then any experience things here. I'll just randomly give to someone on the slow path to getting them all up to level 60. I didn't do this the most optimal way, which you can do now with alts, but it's it's at least something for the moment anyway. So those done. Then I can get TLDR off calculating all of the missions, because sometimes can take a while. With Ardenweald it's fairly easy. So I've got that all set up. Watch a video from Sansful if you want to see how this uh, works. Some really good advice there on mission tables, but I usually just have this all set up, ready to go, and then I can leave that calculating whilst I go after the other character. Yeah, all missions sent already. Samadan takes quite a while on that because the Kyrian followers aren't usually as powerful. So it tends to have to work out a little bit more on that front. But then I can go through my other characters whilst 
he's working. I'll just leave that for the moment though, because and it's not quite balanced. There's more stuff to do on this side than there is on the other side. Once I've got your awakening back here, then maybe there'll be some extra things I can do on that front. Okay, that's Samadan done. What have we got here in terms of sales? Gale Force striking, a bit of desolate leather. I'm selling a lot of my sort of raw materials as well at the moment. Now I've moved some of my things that I'd normally hold on to into my commodities flipping profile just so that I can start selling a bit more of my excess stock here. Lovely to see some sales here, some cheap Grim Veil stuff. Good riddance really on those ones because it's usually just wasted time on those and I don't like to delete them. We've got a few other bits and pieces. Shadow Lace tunic there, uh, dress shoes, a bit of Transmog Veil, Dolphin Runes. The kind of diversity there that allows me to tick through on a number of auctions, at least get a bit of gold coming through even if there's no big ticket sales then. So happy with that. I'll take all of those. Okay, so then I'll do the same process over here on Samadan. I'll head on over to my Covenant and then Bridget is done on this front. We're done with our mail. Doing okay gold-wise at the moment, I think. I'll leave Bridget here ready for the next time I log on, then I can do the mission tables first. And then whilst that's loading through, I'll log on over to another character, over to Erfan, who's currently in Revendreth at the moment. And then whilst that's loading, I can head on over here and do my mission tables over on Samadan, which, like I said, takes a little bit longer. So same process, complete all the ones, see if there's anything interesting to open up. Bit of anima, bit of experience there. I'll open up these, collect up that, grab a bit here. We actually have someone at 60 now, which is really nice. First one at 60. There we go, all of those. And then we'll just set this off calculating. That can take a while, so whilst that's going on, we'll have a look here. Where are we at? Okay, we're in mailbox first. So we'll come here, start opening things up. I'll stay on this character whilst that calculates. Keep an eye on things. 14,000 already. What have we got? Some fell hide. We sold that. It's a good price. We actually sold some tempest hide. <laughs> wow, I got so much of that in my guild bank. It's nice to get rid of some of it. 646 gold though. That's really cheap. Desolate leather. Anything else in the mailbox? No at the moment list this in a few chunks normally i like to have my bags a little emptier than this but uh, i've been somewhat messy of late the story of my life to be honest let's just list these on as they are what have you got at the moment Sixty-one thousand on earth and not a huge amount like i said before though my gold is all over the place at the moment another issue obviously with moving some characters over and some professions over is that tsm doesn't have a valid crafting for some professions that have moved over to the other side. So that's something to bear in mind when you're trying to work things out. I can link things up um, with characters. I have done that with a couple of things in terms of linking the TSM accounts. And to be perfectly honest though, I'm not fully sure how it works. So I don't know if it's a one-off thing or whether you have to do it with all characters and all combinations to be able to see everything. That's uh, something I'll have to ask the TSM team. But yeah, I've got a few more things to list off here. 40,000. Take me a couple of lists for this. How's this going? Still calculating. Some of these I might have to skip because they do take quite a while to calculate. I'll leave them going in the background whilst I've got something useful to do. So this for me is it. This is this is the real benefit of uh, having two accounts. Is the fact that I can easily switch between two things. And I feel like I'm being way more efficient with my time. And I'm not just waiting. Now there are benefits obviously to just having one account. Say you're doing something on your main screen that's not power related at all. You could be going through and doing all these maintenance things on your second screen. If you happen to have your day, your life set up that way, then obviously that can work for you. You don't have to have two accounts, but in my situation with how I'm doing things, I find it certainly very, very useful at this stage. I'll probably save those four character transfers that I've got. If I ever want to go back to just one account, uh, then I can do that. I can transfer my characters back. Maybe when I want to get number one on Shadow Song with all collected recipes, maybe I'll do that with all characters back in one place once they've collected up everything from old world stuff. Right, that's all of that for that one. Another 14,000, we'll add that in. So these aren't huge numbers, but they are reasonable per character and they all do add up over time. Okay, so next step is to go over to my mission table. It's a shame some of the covenants you do have to fly between places and it's not as convenient as it is with the Kyrian. But whilst that's going on, let's have a look. That's still going through. It's worked out a few things onto a fresh new one there. What's it on? 10 out of 15. There you can see 
Some of these I know that I'm not going to do very well, so I skip those. But as it is, we're okay for now, whilst I've got something else productive to do. I haven't got all my macros set up here either, so that's something else to do maintenance-wise. Now, these characters don't have as many followers as the first two, so I do have less to do on these. Really looking for anything experience-wise more than anything else. Don't see... There we go. There's one. There's another one. And then we'll go back to companions calculate those so how's this one doing still working on that one 10 or 15 five thousand this one's fairly quick going through those so i'll stay here there we go all missions sent on that one so we're pretty in a pretty good place there so everything's listed let's jump onto another character so blondie chops is a odd character that's just like a random one that i decided to start leveling up um, but Blondie Chops has some of the things that Irfan had that I was transferring over from one account to the other. So but he's got a few of the spare leatherworking bits and pieces. So ideally I'll probably send these back to Irfan and I don't need to list them on a separate character. But for the moment I'm just kind of leaving them on there just to see if they sell over time. That's 11,000 calculations for that one. It's meat as well so I'm going to skip that one. Just let the rest run through. That's uh, provisions, we'll leave that one running. So this should be some extra leatherworking bits and pieces, mainly. No actual sales there, so let's scoop them up. And we've got a few legendaries here as well. Very few and far between with legendary sales. That market is well and truly, especially on this server, minimal at best. But I will finish off collecting them all up, just so that I've got them all. Skip that one, do the rest of those. We didn't quite do all of those. So if there's anything spare that I could do that hasn't been done, that should be a good one. I know we had trouble with that one. How many followers have I got left? At least five. And I look at those things. So I do like raw gold. So let's see if we can actually get one going on that front. Yep, that's a win. We'll send that one over. And we've got three left. Let's try it on these. Not expecting a win here. Oh no, we have got one. Go with that then. So it's good to have TLDR and Venture Plan, but... Uh, Kind of work well together okay so that's done on samadan took longer to do on samadan than it did on other characters so i'll leave samadan here for the moment and we'll get ready to go over to the next character in the meantime whilst that's happening we can just list some options on here and i'll just quickly jump in there and then carry on listing okay we can jump out of that character and then my server flipping character for want of a better word can load through and I'll talk through what I've been doing there. First, I'll go over here and do the same routine. Collect everything up. Grab the XP on someone. Open up any supplies. Probably do with sending all that meat and stuff over to Samadan. The mailing operation would sort that out. But now we're okay. We'll just run this through. So whilst that's calculating, let's have a look at Bra Brakar. It's supposed to be like a warrior that breaks your arm or go, you go R. That's kind of like the thinking behind the name. It was kind of just like a throwaway decision, really. So we have at the moment 541,000 gold. We barely had like 6,000 gold when we went over, I think, something like that. And then in the mailbox, hopefully we got some sales, some silk, vigil torch, first flower, silver, or so that's 35,000, nothing else on that front. So let's open up all of those. And this is all sent, I think. Yes, right. So from here we can go outside and list our auctions. One of the things about this covenant is having to go outside. This one and Revendreth, the uh, Venthyr and Maldraxxon covenants are the most annoying. I would say Ardenwild and Kyrian being the most favourable for gold makers. But I've got one of each, which is quite nice. Right, so there shouldn't be a lot of auctions here. So I can go through these fairly quickly. 12,000 gold, that's on Enchanted Elithium Bars, interesting. Uh, let's grab those and then okay that's pretty full already so I'll start listing this back on and then once you've seen what I've listed I'm not really worrying about price at all on these get that posting and run a post kind of so this is using my flipping average by profile at the moment I should ideally just set up my own sort of mass sell profile because it doesn't really sell everything and I have to do a few of them manually it's easy enough but you can see here a couple of um, legendaries may or may not get sales on those they do get undercut very very quickly and then the rest of these things they try some cosmic healing potions they didn't really sell that well so far so i'm just going to try and 
post these on for whatever price. Just check that something's not ridiculously low and not being baited, um, and then post those on. Go through. See, there's a lot of supply of these things, though. Uh, but 15 gold is really expensive, compared to the fact that I actually bought these for about... Let me just check. So, heavy callus hide, I bought for bought 5,000 for 6 gold, and we're trying to sell them for 15 gold. So anything over double price is really, really good. So, I'll throw these on, see if I can get any sales. That's all of those, I'll have to go through and list everything else. The profit margins on some of these materials aren't as high and the sale rate on some isn't as great so mileage does certainly vary from server to server my my aim here really is just to get rid of them as quickly as possible right let's post these on oh that's nice Forty-nine thousand. must be a, a shadow steel helm Twenty-three thousand. very nice all right everything's through on there so another thirty-five thousand to add in that money 577 total so we're we're not back up to our seven hundred and seventy-one thousand yet so this is still technically a loss at the moment. There's a long way to go still. By no means guaranteed way of making money. And then those are open, so we'll list those. Last of those on, and then we'll swap one over. Right, what have we got here? So the Enchanted Lithium Bar, that's nice. And the Shadow Steel Helm, that's also nice. So 49,000 on there. Considering we're at 68,000, that's very nice. Getting over 100,000. Just to really want to get my base gold levels up again after all this spending that I've been doing, getting all those extra transfers and everything. I feel more comfortable if I've got, say, a million on each account. That would that would feel really good. And then at least I know I can cover at least a couple of months tokens on each and then still have some change left. So those are all posted on. We can probably do with going back in and logging off there. But as I've got the time, I'm just going to log out here and let that time out. So the last of these things to post on, we'll just pop those on. I did spot an auction sold whilst we're here. There we go. All got missives gone and Rising Glory have gone. 21,000 already, so that's really, really cool. And then let's get the last of these on. First flower. Again, we've already got a load of these on. 16 gold at the moment. Pretty sure I got them for less than that. I'm kind of thinking even if I make a small loss on some of these, hopefully overall. Aha, there we go. There's, there's a bit of a, a bait one there at 5 gold 91. Now, I did buy them for 8 gold 10, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, I will actually buy those up, is I think that is relatively cheap, whichever server you're on. And then I'll post here at my 15, which is nearly double what I had there. I'm kind of overflowing the market too much here, 5,000 in, in one go. Let's just jump over to another character whilst I'm talking. But uh, I'm feeling like I'll just throw them on, see if I can get some sales. I mean... Looking wise, how have we got? 20,000 here, 17,000 here. So the stock levels are pretty high here at the moment. We do have a glut of supply. And if I put another load on there, I'm definitely overflowing the amount that's on here. That's, that's a wall and a half at that price. You can see there, 8,000 by one character. So it's not something I would certainly, like I said, recommend doing regularly. Um, but it is something you can do from time to time. You are obviously competing with anyone else who's doing this and they can affect the market on any server at any time. So there's by no means guaranteed prices. And like I said, this time of the expansion doing this is not necessarily the best because prices are sharply falling. Let's get those volatiles in. See the 99 gold, bought them for less than half that. So that's good. This is just spare left over. I'm just throwing this on. I think the Awakening had those. And these Crusader Orbs, there's lots of them. Uh, I'll just go with this this price at the moment, 29. What did we sell them for? Crusader or six gold. Yeah, so that's a nice markup. But these don't sell that much, but I know that I use them myself quite a lot. So I'll just grab those. Okay, let's just... Uh, oh, there we go. There goes a whole load of Vigil's Torch being sold. That's very nice to see. They're buying one at a time. <laughs> something... Something odd. Why buy single ones like that? That's very strange. Right, let's have a look. Okay, so uh, that's not a mailbox. Where's the nearest mailbox? Where are we on here? Stabadan. Okay, so Stabadan's taking up alchemy as well. So I've learned um, the BFA alchemy recently just so that I can have some valid auctions and sell some of the Awakening's old stock. Uh, we've got a, what we've got here. Potion of Hidden Spirit is sold. Not much space here, actually. Uh, let's just go clear that out. 
And not much space in the bank either. Okay, let's get rid of the herbs. Move your bank back. Okay, that bank's full. And reagent bank looks like it's already full. That's cleared up a little bit of space. 42, that'll have to do for now. There's not a huge amount of stock here. Really, really do need to restock on Stabadan there. Anyway, so some great sales here. That's coming through. That's useful to know. Let's post these on. And we'll leave that for the moment. So yes, let's have a look. So we have at the moment 576,000 gold. We've just sold 22 auctions for 22,000. So that's coming up to 600,000 gold in hard cash, which is brilliant. So then we've got 1.2 million left. So that totals, what's that? Um, 1.8 million, roughly, looking at that in terms of total value. Now, if I manage to sell them for that value, then then, then great, so 1.8 million. So you take off the 771,000, the 600,000 as well. So you should really ideally be at 1.2, 1.3 million to break even when you take into account the cost of the transfers as a rough ballpark here for this character. So we're at 576,000, so we're still not out of the woods yet we're almost at our break-even cash point not including the transfers and then our proper break-even point uh over a million at least i'd be looking for on this if we can get those 32 posted auctions sold fingers crossed it's is a risk it's a gamble it may not pay off but it's worth it it's worth a stab at this point you know just to try it out so all right i'll finish off with my auctions on this account and then we'll have a look at TSM as a whole in terms of like money earned so far. We are just in the first week of June, really. So we'll see how things are going. Obviously, with the graph being all over the place now, trying to keep track of all my gold is a little bit harder. Some of my uh, add-ons aren't working either since 9.25. So we'll just have to rely on TSM calculating everyone's total gold up. I'll just go through and make sure everyone's collected their gold first. And then we'll see what the grand total is. We'll grab the 4,000. Okay, and then we'll jam back over. Our last character's Feng Shu has just picked up a few odd bits and pieces whilst I was managing my inventory. Just grabbed a few things off the uh, guild banks and threw them on. Ideally, to save me having all this load time, I'd probably condense all of this into one banker alt type character because having them spread around like this isn't very efficient. Just make the use of this Brutusaur that's next to us. We've got... Deadly Amber Blaze. So this has got some of the jewel crafting bits and pieces left over from Bridget, it looks like. Ideally, I'll probably send these over to Bridget. Or Brick Day, as she's now called. I'll just get these on. Lots of ore and bits and pieces as well. Just really just getting rid of some spare commodities. At this point, I'm just trying to accumulate a bit of raw gold and clear out my inventory because it's such a mess with so many guild banks, so many characters. I'm figuring at this point, I'll just try and sell as much as possible and see if we can get some decent amount of gold in. Right, that's that all done. Let's jump out onto our last character, Hellfire. Okay, Hellfire's been selling the last of their stock of Widow Bloom. A little bit left there, 2,000. And we'll post that back on. Widow Bloom is below mid price at the moment. What's that? 40 from 49 smart average buy price. Still got quite a lot of that. I can always pass that over to a herbalist to make more use of that. Remember last time in the video I tried to do a flip with the nightshade and sell the potions there? I think that pretty much worked out. Um, I managed to sell those potions eventually, so therefore made a profit out of that. I could possibly do the same here with Widow Bloom and turn it into something more profitable rather than just selling the raw thing. But some things like we found for potions on Brakar here aren't selling that quickly at the moment. Maybe once season four starts, We'll see. So summary wise, let's have a look. Gold. Now split across two accounts does make it slightly harder. We can look here on TSM total gold on this account, 544,000. Spread fairly evenly evenly across uh, Samadan, Stabadan, El Morte. So 544,000 there. And then over on this side, we have 944,000. Mainly there on Brakar from the transfer over and Bridget has a decent amount, and Irvin is slowly building up his reserves there as well. So, what have you got total? 944 plus 544 is 1.5 million, roughly, uh, in total, just under. So, that's 
that's okay. Let's see if we can get ourselves up to, certainly by the end of the month, uh, a target here. Where are we at on the 12th of June? So, yes, um, 100,000, uh, a million gold on each account. That's quite a tall order, though, to be honest. I'm more likely to probably get it here on selling those commodities than I am on Samadan. And it depends, of course, on my playstyle and how often I'll be able to relist and re-auction. But with this system going, it shouldn't take me too long. Probably, if I was going at it, probably looking at sort of 20 to 40 minutes as a rough estimate, depending on what else I'm doing and how quickly I can go between those. Obviously, I've been talking quite a lot whilst doing this, so I haven't kept track as to how long I've been yabbering on for. But that's the general idea anyway. Um, so in terms of gold making, I really, really like having two accounts. It, it's fine if you can afford to, to have the running cost of two accounts. Uh, it certainly makes things a lot more convenient, uh, that's for sure. Right, so let's have a look at the Wowhead Economy blog for this week, which kind of talks a little bit about what we're doing here in terms of diversifying and doing different things, because this is the perfect time of an expansion to be doing that. So we are at the 231st edition of the Wowhead Economy wrap-up. My name is Samadhan, I'll be your guide through the world of gold making. So this week, talking through continuance of what I've been doing there with the second account of the things you can do to expand your gold empire. At this point of the expansion, everything's kind of settling down. Uh, people are dumping their mats, they're doing getting the last of their sales of different things. People are trying collecting lots of different things, they're trying paying lots of different alts. There's probably a few people that are swapping between Horde and Alliance now, now that the whole cross-faction thing is going on. And then people will be looking forward to Season 4, seeing what happens there. And then hopefully the players will just tick through, the gold will tick through. I'll expand and diversify my own empire. So what I'm doing in the background is collecting old recipes and thinking about classic, but that's that's a whole other story. Um, so this, this economy blog is talking about all about things you can do um, in terms of your gold making journey, what you might do to expand on what you're already doing. So first thing I always recommend with someone who's looking to make more gold is to diversify. So say you started with a couple of professions and they're doing really well is I would say, okay, do more professions because the thing about professions is they are interlinked and you can start crafting things for one profession using another profession like for example getting the Shadowgast ingots um, as a blacksmith you can pass on to your jewel crafter and it's usually cheapest to buy the raw materials and then craft them into the things you need and if you've got all professions covered then that's a really good basis and it gives you more diversity and options as expansions rise and fall and different professions take the crown as to what's the most profitable depending on your server if you've got all professions covered then it's it's a really good basis to start from obviously that requires time you need multiple alts uh, to be able to have all the professions and you're having to juggle multiple characters and inventories and take more time and you might need a guild bank and things like that so but the pros and cons of them as there is with anything you do and well it's about choosing what's fun for you and looking for ways in which you can do more with your gold making. So the other aspect to that is rather than more breadth to your professions is more depth. And that's in learning the older expansions. I was asked recently on YouTube, um, should they just do Shadowlands or should they do old expansions? Now, I always say with old expansions, there's always these little niches, um, things like the Mage Tower or certain Transmog or Mounts or Pets and things like that that can be crafted in the older expansions that you could learn those recipes and then add that to your list of things that you're selling. They generally tend to sell slower because they're usually in less demand and more for collectors, but there's lots of different things you can do there, especially the things that are difficult to obtain or rare. Um, if you've got hold of something like that and you can sell it for a premium price, then all the better. I mean, for example, the, the jewel crafting mounts are, are nice and easy. The the Tomes of Illusions with Enchanting, uh, the basic ones are easy to get, the ones that are a lot behind reputation, um, which take a bit more time and effort to get, I can command a higher price for those. It all takes time to learn the old expansions, go out and collect all the recipes. I mean, that in itself for me is a huge fun thing anyway, uh, so I like to do, to do that. And if I can make some gold on the side, you know, that's that's a bonus really in my eyes. So there's, there's lots you can do. So Usually when people are talking about professions and gold making, I say, okay, get your breadth with all the professions and then you can get your depth with all the expansions 
and that way you've got a very large portion of the market covered and then just recraft what sells list and repeat so in terms of expanding your your empire i'd say that's a really good core but but maybe you don't like professionals maybe you want to do something else and so i split out a few different things um different techniques and things you can do you can always add these in to doing them uh, a lot of us are general all-round gold makers that do a lot of these different things like i do a little bit of flipping very rarely a bit of farming i also do mission tables very rarely any pets so there's more i could do um, in terms of gold making and these are the different kind of things so flipping buy low sell high in the auction house you know it's good for quick growth of gold and you don't need a lot of setup time but obviously it's quite risky and does require a good knowledge of the market if you want to see someone who does flipping particularly well have a look at hickons i've got uh, his twitter linked here but also occasionally streams and does videos as well there's quite a few gold makers out there um that do flipping as part of their auction house play is a really solid way to make gold once you know your markets another thing a lot of people do is farming going through old dungeons and um, picking up transmog it used to be nice when you could do raw gold as well but that's pretty much by and gone now so it's mainly for transmog sales um it's good fun student albatross does a whole load of this um check out his youtube channel and twitch streams he's got a recent video here on going top five uh, dungeon gold farms Really, there's so many different things and different things to collect. This video is quite good because it goes through all the unique things that you can get from each of the dungeons and why he's choosing these ones. But largely, it's all about collecting up a, a large inventory of transmog that you can sell slowly over time. It's a, it's a definite slow seller. That's why you need a large inventory so that you can see some steady sales each day. So it's certainly a viable way to make gold. Um, you can always add it to different methods. And that's, that's more breadth to your gold making, which is really cool. Mission tables, another thing we've talked about this quite a lot on the uh, economy blog. Zanzifal, big fan of the mission tables. He's got lots and lots of alts that he's taken through this way. Certainly can make plenty of gold once you've got enough alts. So it's great for um, having steady gold each day. It's expanded more so the more alts that you can leverage against this. And the big downside to this is it does take time to level up the alts get the mission table set up i mean there's plenty of posts around um about how to set them up the most efficiently but uh i'd highly recommend this if you're if you have got a lot of alts you enjoy playing alts you enjoy the leveling process this is a great way of making the most of the mission tables as far as we know what they've said with dragonfly onwards is they're not going to be doing mission tables so this is probably your last chance at this there's a decent amount to be of gold to be made right now though so if you love alts this is definitely a way forward. Penguin has got a nice interview with Zanzifal going through the whole process here in this video here. Another thing a lot of people like to do, pet farming and selling, which is really nice because you can spread them across different realms. So you could start um, trading across different servers quite easily by transferring pets from one to another. That's something I didn't actually mention. Let's just jump back. What's been happening with Joakening whilst he's been waiting on the other side? This is exactly what I did here. So I'm going to log out here and I jump back on over to Kazakh where Jew Awakening is waiting. So this is one of the questions I had. Okay, what am I going to do whilst I'm waiting for my 30 days tenure before I can transfer back is, uh, okay, what I'll do is I'll, grow, I'll go and grab all my pets that I have over on Shadow Song. I've got a whole random collection, some gifted to me, some I've collected myself. I just caged them all up, sent them picked them up over on Awakening and listed them on in the auction house just so that basically when it comes time to transfer back over maybe I can pick up a few more materials and uh, come back over and sell them for a higher price so try to make the, the, the most use of this time and this is what pet sellers do um, trying to get the best price from one server to another I'm kind of just more of a sort of throw it on and hope it sells kind of person but the kind of um, the same principle applies really it's a it's a nice way of being able to grab things from one server and get the best price on another. Let's just have a look at what we've got sales-wise as an example here. So again, it's a slow seller. Nothing here. We've just sold bananas, tainted wavelength, and pedal feet. Uh, 2,800 total there. We'll pick up all of this and list it back on. I have got a decent amount of gold already from a couple of sales of things like Pierre and a few other pets. So it is certainly a viable way of collecting up gold. And it's certainly a good way of moving gold from one server to another. So there we go. A load of pets posted on 
We've got 42,000 gold here and 1.5 million in posted auctions. They're probably not going to sell for that price uh, in the time I've got to try selling them, but that's a great fun way to make gold, certainly. And if you want to see someone who does this really well, Vardis, I've got the uh, link here for um, Billy Vardis' um, Twitter page. Uh, have a look there. So their techniques and there's lots of um, people who specialize in pet farming and selling so check them out as well so those are the kind of like the different techniques um, for gold making the the main ones at least and then we talk about other things you can do obviously so so branching out so this is talking more about sort of doing what you enjoy doing and you found successful and then repeating that on another server so you're not necessarily diversifying a huge amount but say you like certain things like jewel crafting or enchanting or just crafting as a whole okay you've you've filled that out on one server you don't want to try different techniques because you don't find those fun but you could do the same on another server now this is obviously completely down to how much time you have spent and if you want to go onto another server try out a different market but doing the same thing so you make use of your existing knowledge and experience and you can focus on whichever servers currently bringing in the most profits and maybe you go over to another server and that one's really good at certain things and so you can go okay i'll double down on that i'll start doing that to make the gold it all depends obviously on what you find fun but what you're doing here is you're you're repeating what you find fun but you're just doing it on another server Obviously, the cons to this, it takes time to set up on another server, especially something like Professions where you have to collecting up all the recipes and things like that. Um, and your gold and your inventory is split across different servers. But it's a very valid way of increasing the way you make gold by doing the same thing you've already learned to do, but in a different place. Obviously, servers are slightly different in their markets, and you may find some markets are oversaturated and there's too many people working on that market on one server whereas others have got their own niches and it's a question of just finding out those and working out what's best for you. This was talked about recently on the uh, reddit uh, by Silent Assault um, who's basically thinking about okay I'm on a high pop realm um, maybe I've got a whole lot of hordes alts on a medium high pop RP server why don't I keep them over there and uh, see what I can do from a gold making uh, if you operate on two servers how do you split your time between them and couple of responses here i do the exact same thing on my first ser first server just craft all the same things and post in the auction house as long as there is profit depending on the expansion in and patch and which competitors the return actually goes back and forth which server you like best so that's that's a really solid way of just maximizing whichever one is doing best and then you just double down on that one uh enchanting inscription don't have much startup and you can still make um enchants missives and glyphs um so you can get started on some professions fairly easily, um, but then usually there's more competition for those who it's kind of like your mileage will vary depending on that. Uh, it's nice when I plan to spend an afternoon playing and posting and someone has ruined the market on your other server, you just really focus on the other one. Um, and the other action, the other bonus is you have access to a second black market auction house if you tend to use those, uh, access to multiple uh, pets at multiple prices, or you can just buy tokens and battle net balance and eventually close down a server so there's loads of different options here again a bit like having two accounts it gives you more options really certainly and uh, Rukati here uh, plays on four servers three servers but one character each and then your main server has a bunch started making gold on your three alt servers in 9.2 and this time focusing on the dual crafting 233 and 262 the crafters mark because um, they're easy to get set up and Basically, you can just keep on selling them, whichever one is doing particularly well. This is a nice plan here. Have 1 million gold by minimum. And each time you hit a token past that, um, and then just uh, add that to your ba battle net balance. I know um, Commander Bond has been doing this if you follow him on Twitter. Um, every time one profession gets a token's worth, uh, he sort of posts that and buys out a token. But it really is down to how much time you have, really. If you're if you're at a loose end and you want to expand, then going into another server doing the same things you already find profitable is a great way to earn more gold doing the same thing. Then this one we've kind of talked about in demonstration uh, myself with the two accounts in the beginning of this video. Having a second account, there's so many different pros to this um, and different varieties in which you can play. It just really maximizes your time and efficiency over anything else, which is absolutely fantastic. I didn't mention um, you can use Recruiter Friend on yourself to gain the benefits of the extra game time in Transmog. I've done that myself. 
um, you can double up on doing the daily weekly um, bosses and saving time or running old raids. The, you can also play classic on one and retail on the other. That's another thing that's really nice. You could just be listing your auctions uh, whilst playing classic. And then the obvious one that a lot of people will do will play and raid on the main account uh, while listing auctions on the second. So that's in the more traditional. You've got the banker tune on one account and you do all your main playing on the other account. So it's it's down to efficiency. Really, there's the main benefit. But obviously, the main downside to this is the cost of running two accounts. So you do have to have a pretty decent gold income setup already established before you start doing this kind of thing. And then don't forget, it's obviously a drain on resources running two WoW accounts. Obviously, WoW can be fairly easy on a PC these days. Um, but if you're if you're struggling with uh, running WoW, just one WoW, running two can be quite tricky. Then a couple of old Reddit responses that I picked out from a few years ago. Um, the second tune, the same account as your bank tune, without the need to log out and main conduct your business. And it's just down to time, efficiency. Uh, you have your alt on your main account as crafting. And whilst they do that, your alt tap over to your bank tune and take care of the auction house. This kind of flip-flopping that I showed in the beginning of the video is exactly what makes having two accounts really, really useful. And then here, um, Dom Heron is in the same situation, thinking left and right if you should get a second account or not. Uh, it's absolute best decision I've made in terms of auction house play. It's so much gold thanks to that decision. Granted, it costs more or more token per month, but so worth it. And actually being able to enjoy the game now instead of always sitting in the auction house, which is another thing. You know, is it fun having two accounts? I certainly can see the benefits enough to, to make it certainly enjoyable. So I hope all of these little methods, are, uh, if you're new to goal making, you're, you're wondering how to expand, these give you at least some suggestions as to how you can expand your gold empire. So on the other side of the coin, a bit of classic gold making news at the moment. Um, a lot of people are talking about Wrath of the Lich King that's coming out very soon. Hopefully we'll get a beta um, some point soon, but then uh, it'll, that'll get released fairly quickly. And there'll be a whole slew of people um, looking to get into gold making. But those people are, but people are making gold now with Burning Crusade and doing the dailies in the Sunwell, doing the Sunwell dailies and auction house crafting at the moment. And Lazy Goldmaker goes through and compares between what's necessarily uh, the most cost-effective way to, for your time uh, using the auction house or uh, doing the dailies. So there's a nice comparison there in this video. Uh, no Hitch Rome has been asking about you know what's the best raw gold makers in Burning Crusade right now. Um, currently farming gold, boosting Stratholm using uh, GDKPs. Um, also do cooking flips and sell food on high days. Um, there's there's a lot of talk at the moment with the uh, the daily quest having a limit on it and um, what's the best way to do that and so here we've got a great video from uh, wow classic curios talking about all the different dailies you can do mainly the sunwell ones and how to do them efficiently um so if you're this is current content really now with um burning crusade so a lot of people are doing that i'm nowhere near this on my own characters i'm just trying to slowly slowly level up um but I, again it comes down to time and right now i just don't have enough time but I would love to get into doing uh, more classic gold making. Certainly, uh, I just need to. I just need more time. <laughs> but that's pretty much it for the uh, gold making uh, economy wrap up for this week. Bit of classic and a lot of stuff about um, expanding your gold empire. I hope you found that useful. Uh, I certainly am having a huge amount of fun with having two accounts at the moment, and I really do wish I had done it sooner. So until next time, happy gold making. And I'll see you very soon.